JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R is the recently released remaster of 2013's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle. Holy crap, that was a mouthful. The original 2013 game was a PS3 exclusive, but its remaster is being released on Steam, PS4, PS5, Xbox, and Switch. I like when games do this. It gives people who never owned a PS3 a chance to try the game. Although I'm not too happy about calling this game a remaster, because come on, just look at oh this. The graphics God, look bro. barely any updated. I've seen ports with better graphic upgrades. You know, I'll give credit where credit is due, though. The game runs at a silky smooth 60 FPS, and back on the PS3 it only ran at 30. The game launched alongside Stone Ocean's second batch, which made September 1st more exciting than my birthday. The game definitely marketed itself as an expanded version of All-Star Battle. You know, it's not just going to be a remaster or a port, there's going to be 10 uh -huh. new characters. Aw, oh, crap. If it wasn't for the incident in 09, I'd be able to count them with my fingers. Considering the original PS3 game had 40 characters, that would mean that this remaster will have 50. You know what? Can't complain. The more the merrier. Especially considering that the base game had some really glaring omniscience. When I can play as the mighty Stroheim, I will buy this game. Hopefully it'll be a bit cheaper by then. Like, come on guys. No Foo Fighters? The worst offender in my opinion is that they only had one character from Part 8. But you see, this was kind of understandable, because you gotta remember that the original game was released back in 2013. That meant that the game released during Jojolian's early stages. So you know, it kind of makes sense that they wouldn't have a lot of characters to pick from. And you know, since the release of the 2013 game and the remaster, Jojolian has actually finished. So oh boy, am I ready to kick some ass as Joshu. How do we tell him, Mr. Squidward? You see, once the character trailers started dropping, the community noticed something. Every single new character that they're adding to All-Star Battle R was already in Eyes of Heaven, which was a JoJo fighting game released in 2015. Little history lesson real quick. Since the original All-Star Battle released in 2013, and Eyes of Heaven only released two years later, they actually ported a lot of the content from All-Star Battle into Eyes of Heaven. So clearly under the hood of the game, they're similar enough that the developers can easily just bring stuff to and from each game. And so trailer after trailer came out, and all we were getting were characters we already saw in Eyes of Heaven. They don't even look different. So yeah, those 10 new fighters the developers were flaunting. Yeah, get off your high horse, that's not impressive, you're just copying and pasting it from an old game. So how about you guys stop marketing that there's new content in All-Star Battle R that was never seen before? Because if you played the original All-Star Battle, and Eyes of Heaven, then that means that there really isn't any new content for you. You know, one of my biggest issues with this game is actually how they marketed themselves. For the love of God, stop calling yourself a remaster. This game is not a remaster. This is a port. The only reason they want to call it a remaster is so they can charge me $60 on Steam. And yeah, it worked. I bought their game. <laughs> Honestly, there is no reason that this almost 10 years old PS3 niche licensed anime fighting game should be selling on Steam for $60. Oh hey, but look at this, they slap one letter to the end of the name and wow, now the game is suddenly worth three times what it should be. I'm gonna be reviewing this game as a casual fighters fan. I've casually played these fighting games. I got this game for JoJo first, fighting second. That doesn't mean I'm gonna be happy with a piss poor fighting game, but it does mean I don't really care about whether the game has these built in mechanics designed for letting the 0.1% pro players play with absolute fairness and polish. Dog, I'm just here for some JoJo fun. Let me shoot people as Funny Valentine. Okay, we're starting out strong because the roster is the best part of the game. You know, 50 fighters is pretty impressive for a fighting game. <laughs> well damn, you sure shut me up. With such a large roster, you'd expect a lot of characters to play the same way, but they don't. Every time I try a new character, I'm actually surprised at how much different they feel. You know, you're playing Foo Fighters, you gotta watch out for your water meter the whole fight. Johnny's only got 10 fingernails, so he can only shoot 10 shots before he has to drink his G Fuel. And man, I tried to play Prosciutto and Pechi. I don't know what the hell was going on. I could swap between them. There was this level meter that appeared at the bottom. It's far beyond my understanding, but it sure as hell is unique. Every character is assigned a style. This is a good way for the game to categorize such a large roster because despite every character being unique, characters of the same style often share similarities. 
You know, for example, characters with the mounted style can hop on and off a horse at any time by pressing R1. The different styles are Hamon, Vampirism, Mode, Stand, Mounted, Ogre Street, Bro and Mamoni, <laughs> Bow Armed Phenomenon? If you know anything about JoJo, then you'd know that most of the roster belongs to the stand style. Speaking of which, as impressive as the roster is, this character selection kind of blows. There is such a clear bias going on here. The most glaring bias being that there's still only a single character from part 8 being Josuke. What the hell? What was the point of the remaster? Why did you wait this long? Jojolian's ended by now. Why do you only have one character? <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that. You guys know Jojolian's the most recent part, right? You know, I'd kind of think that would get priority. So... Back when they were doing the trailers, showing the 10 new characters that would be in the game, after every reveal, people were wondering, oh, you know, next one's gonna be a part 8 character. Oh, next one's gonna be a part 8 character. Josh, who's next, guys? Trust me, I swear. My dad is a software engineer at Sony. Trust me, guys, Toru's gonna be revealed next. But you know what? We never got any part 8 characters. But do you know who we did get? Pet Shop. Bruh. We got Pet Shop. Yup. Man, Pet Shop fans are apparently eating good tonight. I know all four of you are really happy about this. I hope you're still hungry for this. I hope you're not full, because clearly you guys have been snacking on the misery of others. Okay, clearly the guys who made this game love part three and four. Like, just look at how much of the roster these two parts take up alone. Look at this! I even made a pie chart showing the breakdown of roster by each character's part. You see that tiny little sliver over there? Yeah, that's part 8. And then look at this girthy, meaty part 3 slice. Part 8 fans are literally starving. Part 3, please share your pie with them. Josuke's moveset doesn't even reflect the part very well. Since the original game was only released with a couple chapters to reference, Josuke's moveset is very primitive and very early part 8-ish, with none of his attacks from later in the part. And if you've read Jojolian, you would know how much more opportunities for attacks you could give this man. For Christ's sake, part 8 is the longest part. There is so much cool stuff you can reference for Josuke's moveset. You guys love to talk about the 10 new characters in the game, which aren't even nude, by the way. But updating the protagonist of the most recent part's moveset... Mm, we'll pass! Okay. I said the roster was the best part. I gotta, I gotta calm down. Okay, I think happy thoughts. Think Stone Ocean Johnny Depp scene. Think stupid days of the week joke that I'm too stupid to understand. Okay, I'm good. Listen. Do you want to know what stings the most? What really turns this scrape into a scar? Part 8 in this game has equal representation in a JoJo fighting game as a manga series called Bao. Part 8 has one character in this game. Bao also has one character in this game. Bao is just as important as Jojolian. Now I bet all of you are wondering, what the hell is Bao? Because yeah, I did too. Everyone did. Nobody cares about Bao, I'm sorry. <laughs> well actually, Bao is my favorite manga. Alright, why do you think you're burning in hell right now? My affiliations with the attack on September- Bao was a short manga series that ran from 1984 to 1985. It was written by Hirohiko Araki, which is, you know, fair reason to add him as a guest in a JoJo fighting game. My issue isn't with Bao itself being in the game. My issue is that this obscure old manga that I can guarantee you nobody cares about has as much representation in a JoJo fighting game than the most recent part of JoJo. It's like if you bought a collection of all the Persona games, but instead of having Persona 5, it's been replaced with Prison Architect. Like, I like Prison Architect, but uh, it's not really what I wanted. And god, it gets worse. Of course it gets worse. Bao is OP and I hate it. Why did they make this guy OP? Who wanted this guy to be top of the meta? Jojolian isn't the only issue I have with this roster. First, let's give some credit. You know, I'm a fair man. I see something I like, I give it to him. They actually added Foo Fighters into the game. Which is especially surprising when you remember that Foo Fighters wasn't even in Eyes of Heaven. Which means holy crap, they actually decided to make something new! Kinda weird that it took her this long to finally get into a game, but you know what? I'll take it. 
Unfortunately, it's not all good on Green Dolphin Street, because they still don't have Weather Report. Weather Report does exist in the game as a stage hazard on the Green Dolphin Street prison map. I don't know if this is gonna be like Smash Bros. Assist Trophy Hell, but considering they have Foo Fighters as a stage hazard on the Everglade stage, I think it's pretty likely that Weather Report is gonna be the first DLC character. New Moon Poochie is also gone. This is because of spoilers for anime-only fans. I mean, he's still in the original game and Eyes of Heaven. They said they're gonna release him for free later down the line, probably gonna release him with Batch 3. I don't really care that much because we already have regular Poochie, but I can imagine people who mained New Moon Poochie in the original game probably punch an air right now. By the time New Moon Poochie and Batch 3 finally drop, I'm gonna be too busy babysitting my grandkids to care about this. But you know what? At least it's gonna be free, because I know damn well I am not paying for Weather Report. What the hell? Oh my god, no way! The game has 13 maps, having at least one map for every part. Thank god Bao doesn't have a map. Every map has its own unique stage gimmicks, which can be toggled on and off. This is stuff like the lightning strike in Morio after Rohan reads it inside of Hayato, which made me smile seeing that they incorporated that scene into the game. It was a very cool moment. The only parts that get a single map are Dujolin and Phantom Blood. It's kind of poetic that the newest and oldest parts are the least represented. My favorite map is Philadelphia Shoreline because A, duh, and B, come on man, just pretty. Overall, I feel like maps in fighting games like these don't usually have much to say about them. In most cases, it seems that the maps don't have much mechanically that separate them apart. What the hell? I was just about to compliment Smash Bros again, but I don't want to ride them too hard. So instead, use your imagination to pretend I said something negative about Smash Bros. I think the maps are really great in this game. There's a good amount of them, except for Jojolian locations. And all the maps are filled with so many fun references back to the source material, which I, as a Jojo tard, love to see more than a good unsucked cock. <laughs> What the hell is up with the prompts in this game? After a match, I want to return to the main menu and I gotta click yes, yes, yes? Like, goddamn, I'm not that excited. I just want to go back to the main menu. Jeez. And if I change my mind, I gotta say, like hell I will. Like I'm some kind of narcissistic, angsty teen. Okay, okay, I get the yes, yes, yes reference, but honestly, I have no idea where the like hell I will comes from. It's fun to imagine that that wasn't even a reference at all, and all the posh middle-aged Japanese men who made this game were sitting around in a conference room and just came up with that phrase to make selecting no sound way cooler than it actually is. All-Star Battle. He said it! He said it! This is as close to a campaign as you're gonna get in this game. The original game had an actual campaign, but I guess CyberConnect 2 decided that this is what needed an overhaul. No, 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 CyberConnect2, shh. Don't worry about Part 8, CyberConnect2, shh. Don't worry about Part 8. Shh, shh, shh. Jujolian will be fine. You're making an even worse campaign. You know, I'd be lying if I said the original game's campaign was good. Because it ain't. <laughs> but you know what? They tried their darndest to implement the story of JoJo's into a single game, even if it was done through a PowerPoint presentation. All-Star Battle has no story, no text, no catching up to speed, nada, zip, none at all. Instead, you get the Smash Bros. Ultimate Achievement page, but each achievement is a battle. They have battles representing all eight parts. Honestly, I'm surprised they remembered to add a page for Part 8. But you see, when I saw that they do have a page for Part 8, I thought, oh, okay, so now they're picking favorites. Jojolian gets a whole page for itself, but Bao gets nothing? Part 8 has just as many characters in this game as Bao, yet Bao gets axed from a page in the campaign. Oh, I'll never understand you, CyberConnect2. Hey look, notice these colors? The purple and the green? The green fights are the canon fights, as in they are actual fights that happen in the series, such as Joseph vs. ECDC, or Iggy vs. Pet Shop, and Josuke vs. Rohan. The purple fights are just extras, basically just random fights that never happen in the series. 
This is where CyberConnect 2 just said, you know what? Screw it. Koichi versus Johnny. Who you got? Come on, man. That's too easy. It's a cool idea. I now have a reason to see Jotaro versus Diavolo. But in my opinion, there's way too many extras. You see, the extras should be used to make up for a lack of fights in a part only after all the canon fights are added. Of course, not every character in the franchise is in this game, so not every fight can be added. But some fights that happened in the series that could be added to the game just aren't there. And there's no reason why they shouldn't. The only reason I can think of as to why there's no Avdol versus Polnareff fight on the Part 3 page is because CyberConnect 2 probably forgot that fight even happened. There's no other explanation. Why did they give us Shigechi vs. Pet Shop in Part 3 if they didn't even add all the fights from Part 3 that they could have? Extra should be exactly that, an extra, not a replacement for a main canon fight. Also, don't you dare try and slip some steel ball run slander by me? Me? Okay, I know damn well that there was never a fight between Johnny and Gyro. Why is this fight green? This should be purple. This never happened. You know, I'm kind of curious what they did for the Jajoli. But oh my god, avert your eyes! I think the color purple has been permanently burned into my retinas. Every time I close my eyes, it's all I see is just purple. Every single fight for the part 8 page is an extra fight. Jajolian fans, what did you do to CyberConnect 2? They hate you guys! Look at this, every fight is just Josuke, which also makes this page by far the least interesting to go through. There's no variety. And don't think I didn't notice the Yashuo at the bottom corner of the page here. Is it cool representation? Or is it a pathetic excuse to appease Jajolian fans? Hello, I'm Luigi. Next up is Arcade, and I'ma be honest, this mode sucks. It's just eight consecutive fights against the CPU. It's like if you played versus mode eight times in a row, except you can't leave between each fight, and you have to stick with one character. CyberConnect, that's just lame. I can recreate this myself in versus mode. Why is this its own mode? Oh, but playing in the arcade lets you go and try for a high score with different characters. Yeah, well, I won the arcade as Ermes and didn't even save my score. So I have no interest in ever launching this mode again. The Endless mode is way more fun. Every fight is only one round and the next fight starts immediately. So it's kind of like a fun gauntlet. And if I ever get tired during Endless, I can just leave. I'm still accomplishing something unlike the main arcade mode. I was not having a fun time on Ermes, but I felt obligated to see it through all eight matches just so my time wouldn't have been wasted. Oh, well, joke's on me. Finally, make it to versus mode. This is your standard offline fighting game mode. This is where you get to fight your friends locally on the same console, and it's also where people like me spend their time on the game simply fighting the same CPU over and over. This is probably the best way to play this game. The first option, not the CPU one. That one, that one's just sad. I only say probably because I bought the game on Steam, a platform not very well known for being very local co-op friendly. But, let's say you're a student who lives in a house with a bunch of roommates who all just so happen to love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and you guys also just so happen to all pitch in and buy a communal PS5 to play games together on, then versus mode is where you're going to be spending all your time on. This is a pretty damn niche demographic, but they'd probably get the best out of this game. I could see playing this game with my buddies in person on the couch could be a really fun night. Unfortunately, I'm stuck fighting this frustrating Bruno CPU that just spams this one annoying attack over and over. Versus also has team battles, but don't get your hopes up because all that happens is that you get to swap with your buddies mid-match when you die, and a tournament mode. I didn't play either of these because, well, I don't really care for fighting in a tournament alone. But hey, next time I get bored fighting CPUs, I can choose a CPU versus CPU match. Man, why do fighting games keep having this? I see this all the time. What, are they trying to promote my already crippling gambling addiction? I'm already down a hundred bucks in my firstborn child after the Mortal Kombat CPU v CPU incident of 019. You know what? The best part of Versus Mode is that it's hosted by Ringo Road again. Yeah, it doesn't work. Honestly, I don't know why they bothered putting it in online if it doesn't work. Run it. What?
What? No rollback netcode in a 2022 fighter? Ranked is worthless because if you leave, the other person doesn't get a win, so people just quit right at the end. I don't even get the win for that. It gave me a loss. This is 2022. It didn't give me a loss. It just didn't get the win. This is 2022. That is an issue that existed back when I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. If you leave, it doesn't count as a win. I- this is outrageous. That is if you can even get into a lobby, because it takes like 8 attempts of matchmaking to even find a match. Basically, it's a mess, and because of that, the game is gonna die soon. CyberConnect 2, to sell DLC, you need your game to actually stay alive, and part of that is having an online community. So don't shoot us in the chest and try and sell us a medkit after we're already dead. If you, like a lot of people, including myself, wanted to get this game to play online, just don't. This is, in my opinion, the biggest misstep the game took. Look, I'm no game dev, I don't know how hard this stuff is, but if you're porting an old PS3 game, it's not like you're developing a whole new game from scratch. Even all your new content was just ported over from Eyes of Heaven. Why the hell couldn't you guys just take the extra time to add rollback netcode? If you gotta delay the game, so be it, it's gonna make the lifespan of the game so much longer. Online feels even more half-assed than any other aspect of the game. Which is so stupid in my opinion, because online is how you keep people engaged for long periods of time. I'm sure I sound like a broken record already, but no one's gonna buy Weather Report, no matter how much they want him, because by the time that DLC drops, no one's gonna be playing this game anymore. That being said, I feel bad for the intern they got to run the game's official Twitter account. You all know the Chadman. He's starting to become a bit of a recurring character on the channel. This guy is really active on Twitter, tweeting all the time, replying to everyone, but every time he puts something up on Twitter, he gets at least 10 comments of people who are asking him to add rollback to the game. Like guys, this guy doesn't make the game. Lay off the Chadman, fix the online, fix the ranked, add rollback, and I guarantee you the game's lifespan would increase dramatically. Practice is, well, practice. Pick your dude and the AI does whatever you want. You can have him just stand there or you can make him attack you. It's just for learning and practicing combos. Not much I can say here. Kind of like practice mode in every other fighting game to ever exist. Ooh, now we're on the goodies, the extras. These last few modes are more or less miscellaneous doohickeys to mess around with. Customize is pretty cool. You can edit each character's taunt and victory animation. You can even pair the different poses with different voice lines too. Most, if not all, the poses and voice lines are direct references from the series. Dojang! So it's pretty cool seeing these iconic poses in 3D. Kaneda. <laughs> some of these voice lines are more like voice speeches because they can take like 10 seconds to play out. And some of them are just... <laughs> you know, there's some pretty funny stuff here. Pizza mozzarella, pizza mozzarella, lenla, 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 lenla. Playing around in this menu reminds me of playing around with Mario's head in Super Mario 64. I don't use taunts in matches. Well, actually, apparently some characters like Speedwagon actually have their taunts as a part of their moveset. It's actually pretty cool. But otherwise, I don't bother. So for me, I'm seeing all these animations and voice lines for the first time. The victory poses are pretty cool too. Personally, I would just find the longest voice line to put onto my victory pose so that after I curb stomp some kids online, they have to sit through my unnecessarily long victory speech as a form of psychological torture. This is supposed to be no more than a post-match taunt, but I love how it's longer than all of the loading screens. The second option on the customized menu is a medal list, which I thought was going to be like trophies from Smash Bros, but it's just a shop where you buy the different voice lines, victory poses, and taunts. Oh, and even some different color schemes. But like, there's already a shop in the game? Why did they have to divide it across two sections? Why isn't all this stuff just put, you know, into the shop? If I wanted to spend my gold and buy some cosmetics, I would think to go to the option on the main menu labeled SHOP. I wouldn't think to go into a sub-menu titled METAL LIST. Lastly, you can customize your player card, which is basically your online profile. And I'd love to tell you what trade card list is, but they won't let me in. Damn, okay, nobody warned me this game was now gatekeeping menus. The other extra mode is titled SHOP and GALLERY. 
which I think is kind of dumb. Like, come on, man, the game clearly loves two submenus, so why does shop and gallery get squished together into one button? Okay, online, practice, customize, wait, shop and gallery? <laughs> I'm getting overwhelmed. Look at this. There's perfectly good space right below options. Just, you know, take out shop and put it down there. I don't know why they decided to ruin the consistency of all the modes being a single word just for shop and gallery. In the shop, you can spend your gold that you earn through battles on various 2D art, 3D models, voice lines, and music. I bought Tusk Act 1 reference art, and they won't let me look at it here. Okay, kinda inconvenient. Actually, now that I think about it, it's kinda like paying taxes. Here's a life hack. If you want to see some of the 2D art without having to grind for it, just zoom in on the little thumbnail they show you. Or alternatively, just move your eyeballs two inches from your monitor. I mean, I guess you can just Google the reference art too, but, you know, that's less fun. Wait a minute, I can buy voice lines for Pet Shop? Why the hell would I want to buy voice lines for a bird? What's he gonna do? Say squawk at different frequencies? Alright, 50 bucks he says squawk with a French accent. Well, uh, I don't know what I expected, but it sure as hell wasn't that. Petrop sounds like he belongs in an alien film more than a JoJo fighter. The 3D models are kinda neat, unless you're a Jojolian fan. But if you've made it this far into this video, you already know how much the game hates you guys. You guys get one model. To add insult to injury, even Bao has two models. Therefore, according to math, Bao models are actually about twice as important as Jojolian models. Oh hey look, I finally found that Tusk Act 1 image I bought. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sure is Tusk, alright. Man, did you hear that voice line when I opened my image? Ooh. Even the character they got to host this menu isn't impressed. Lastly, we got the JoJo Glossary, which is just a built-in JoJo wiki, the end. The only thing I have to say about the options is that it's weird that they separated the controller schemes into battle and menu. Oh hey look, it's part 8. Overall, I'm sad to say that this game is a don't buy. Man, it's such a shame. I was looking so forward to this game. I was playing it the minute it launched in my time zone. There's a good game here. I love the character variety, I love all the unique mechanics the characters have, and the sheer number of unique characters is crazy. But this is a remaster of a PS3 fighting game that feels like it's still stuck in 2013. It just feels like the issues the game has are so obvious that I think it's absolutely wild that CyberConnect 2 launched the game with them. How can you release a modern fighting game with online this bad? How can you release a modern JoJo game in 2022 without any new Jojolian representation? How can you release an old PS3 anime licensed fighting game and sell it for $60 on Steam? This is the same price as Sony's God of War port to the platform. Calling this game a remaster is something I don't want to do, because they're using it as an excuse to jack up the price. Oh, it's not a port of a 2013 PS3 game, it's a remastering of it. No, it's not. Just because you ported over stuff from Eyes of Heaven does not make it a remastering. I think the actual fighting mechanics in this game is stupid solid. Obviously, I don't expect it to be on the level of, say, Mortal Kombat, but for a licensed anime fighter, it feels really solid and, more importantly, fun. I don't expect CyberConnect 2 to fix any of these issues. I want to be proven wrong, but something tells me that this game was just a quick cash grab. Now they're running away with our money. There's still four DLC characters to be announced. But I find it insulting that they even want to charge us even more money for characters that will probably end up being characters that should have been in the game to begin with. I can't believe I pre-ordered this game. We all know how bad it is to pre-order a game, and especially how bad it is to pre-order a digital game, and I paid the price for it. If I lived with friends and had this game on a PS5 set up in the living room, this game would be a blast. Hell, even fighting the CPUs is as fun as fighting CPUs can get. But unfortunately, I'm not getting much out of this game. I'm still going to continue playing for now, but you know, there's only so many CPU matches I can play before I inevitably get tired of the game and move on. Therefore, I will not be recommending this game to anyone. Lower the price, fix the online, add part 8 representation, 
add good single player content, fix the rank system, give us free characters, then I'll rejudge the game. But for now, that's all I really have to say. This video was a doozy to make, so please show me some support by liking the video, and more importantly, please do me the honor of clicking that subscribe button. I know it's cliche, but it really helps so, so much. And in exchange of you guys hitting that subscribe button, I guarantee to feed you guys straight banger videos like this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm usually down there reading and replying to mostly everything. And you know what? I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Don't act like you don't know. Don't act like you don't know.